we're here to continue our watch of Interview with the Vampire, the show. Season one, episode two, after the phantoms of your former self and what a watch it has been. The feet were levitating. You want me? I want you, baby. My sugar boo. I'm levitating. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Louis was had a good time that night. <laughs> but yeah, we're here to continue our watch of Interview with the Vampire. And let me just say that was an excellent series premiere great pilot episode to a new show. Oh my God, when I have the time, I'm gonna get a new printout of the damn poster and put it on the wall behind me. It was so good. I'm invested in the characters, the drama, the intrigue, the mystery, the vampire of it all, the queerness of it all, the blackness of it all, the New Orleans of it all. Oh my God, she's so good. Without further ado, of course, then you can see the extended commentary of this TV show reaction to season one of Interview with the Vampire over on the Patreon. Let's continue talking about the show down below in the comments. Make sure you leave a like and a subscribe so you can see all the reactions to come and it'll just be a very nice thing to do. But without further ado, let's go ahead and just continue our watch of Interview with the Vampire with season one, episode two. After the phantoms of your former self, Louis now officially a vampire. So let's see what happens there. He's accepted Lestat's uh, proposal to be his companion. <laughs> I don't think everything's gonna be kosher. Everything's going to be sweet right off the bat. I don't know what the honeymoon phase is looking like for the two of them, but we're going to find out together. Let's go ahead and get started. It's Venetian, a contemporary of Tintoretto. Okay, Lou's assistant. So he's a human that knows about vampires. Do you always work for him? Please, have a seat. Sign an NDA. I mean, is it only work or are you and he... I serve a god. Yeah, like, what is this guy's situation? So he's human. But he knows about vampires, but Louis also hasn't killed him to feed on his blood. How did he get this job? And how, where do I sign up? <laughs> okay, so this is Louis' dinner. He's so bougie. I love Louis' sophisticatedness. AB negative, fresh from the farm. Not AB negative. Thank you. He wants to ask about the farm. Two vampires walk into a church. That's where we left off. Yes, yes. Let's get back to the main story. I'm so distracted by all the pompous circumstances. I totally forgot where we left off with the damn interview. Um, but okay, uh, so we have AB negative blood fresh from the farm. Where the farm is, I don't know. But I just love Louis' uh, bourgeois, or what's that word, bourgeois, bourgeois, you know, fancy, bougie. <laughs> I wonder if he learned it from Louis, or I wonder if Louis learned it from Lestat, because you know, Lestat is French and all that stuff. Where is Lestat now? Wait a second, I just realized Lestat's not here. Okay, uh, where's Lestat in this present day? Timeline, but yeah, I wonder if you learned all that stuff from um, let's stop. Bliss was merely a stage in my transformation. Pain followed. What's happening? Oh lord, Everybody you're turning into a vampire. Feel like water, your heart fire. You feel as if you're dying because you are. Why is he not comforting him? <laughs> no. You live off the blood of the living. Lap up the blood of the deceased oh. and can suck you right down into death along with your victim. Okay, a little world building. Vampires cannot oh. drink dead people's blood. Okay, now he's in euphoria. I'm sure he's feeling all the effects of his powers. Yeah. Oh boy, he's feeling it now. I was gonna say, I don't like how Lestat was just like leaving Louis to suffer for a moment as he was like transforming. <laughs> oh my God, he feels like he's high. <laughs> Lestat's blood was giggling inside me, teasing my senses, illuminating the district with overwhelming detail. Cause if you think about it, in terms of optics, what, do you, what does it look like at this time in the 1900s in New Orleans in the South, for this white man, even though I guess he's European, French, whatever, I guess there's a distinction at this time from like native whites of the United States and this European man, and this black man to be always seen together at night like this. Like you have to assume that people are like, what is going on with them? Like, you know, usually business is done during the day, maybe a little nightcap to like talk business over a drink or something at a bar, but like they're just always together walking around the streets of New Orleans. People I'm sure will start to assume things. Oh, everything. This is why I would want to become a vampire. The superpowers. Are you hungry, Louis? I am. <laughs> they were your brothers and sisters once, but now they're your savory inferiors. A young oh. tempranillo, fleshy and tart. <laughs> Not the tempranillo. The flavor, oh my God, it just, it's so real, like. Oh, he knows who he wants. Oh, slow down, it's Louis. It's good, it's a party. Uh -huh. In the beginning, it's best to let the food come to you. I'm uh, doing pretty good for him. Louis like, I do not care a single thing about what you're saying. I want to drink your blood right now, sir. We go down to Look at him. Now. He's like, ugh. Or is he still focused on the other guy, the sailor? Ooh. He wants that juicy white vein. 
Oh no, they brought him back to the house. It's a wrap for this guy. He's not making it out. Why did he even come over here? To be clear here, gents, we, we are here to talk about uh, farm equipment. Am I right? You could have talked about farm equipment at the damn bar. Whenever you're ready to. Oh! Oh! I knew it. What do you know? He knew they were vampires. Oh! Oh! Wow. Oh, he's gone for it. Oh, Luke. You can tell he's so like unrefined. You suck it. <laughs> we'll stop trying to teach him, but also just casually watching. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. It's a little baby vampire. Oh, poor man. He had a daughter. I gotta go home. You can't go home. This is your home now, Louis. All right, you trapped. You stuck with him. Go see Grace and Paul. No. Nope. Oh dear. He ain't fucking here, me. Ooh, a little violence. Yeah. Okay. So now it starts pushed him in the church. Now Louis pushing him here, but he's going through some things. Oh, the, is the sun out? Oh, you better go right back inside. You're about to burn. Ah, you better go back inside. Ooh. Ow, 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 ow. Go inside. Oh my God. Get in here. He was not used to this. He knew how to cover himself up and everything. The sun gives light to everything but us. I should have told you that. That's the devil trying to get you guys. I mean, that's a God trying to get you guys. I think New Orleans with its music. Right, culture, all the nighttime life. It fits perfectly. The perfect setting for a vampire home. A vampire romance. Let's start, let's start, let's start. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I ain't sleeping in there. Yes, you are. We'll get to your own soon enough. Oh, we're gonna sleep in there together? Have a rest. I don't like, something about Lestat is bothering me. I don't know what it is. It's okay. You can be on top. Oh! <laughs> you can be both. Meet in the middle. Dance all night. <laughs> I am so sorry. I had to laugh about You just that. cracked yourself I, that up. Just, I, it tickled me. He rushed me headlong through the encounter as if it was something to put behind us. This is all new to Louis. Like he's literally turning into a supernatural being with all the side effects and the benefits of it or whatever. And like Lestat's just going through it so casually. Like has Lestat done this to other people before? Like other humans, like has he transformed other humans before and maybe it hasn't worked out? Or is this the first time Lestat is doing it? Because I don't know, I just feel like I would want to be a little, a little bit more, um, comforted and like coached into it as opposed to like the person who did this to me just kind of just like being all lackadaisical about it like oh you'll be fine like whatever go if you want you're gonna get burned in the sun like i don't know i uh, this isn't the ushering into this new lifestyle that i would expect or want so i don't know i don't like that mm, he's just a little too aloof and lackadaisical about this whole situation for me he's not really let's not really do, he's not really doing it for me right now in this moment like even the fact that Louis wants to go home to see his family, like, let's not, not really, at least like, uh, I don't know. I, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, let's talk, let's talk in the comments. Too many firsts for one night. Coming mm -hmm. out. You robbed a daughter of her father. How's sexuality play in that? In the quiet dark, we were equal. White master, black student, <laughs> but equal in the quiet dark. Oh, Daniel, don't even do that. <laughs> Interracial couples everywhere. <laughs> shh, shh, oh, shh, shh, what the hell is that? Vampires are killers. Uh -huh. Apex predators whose all-seeing eyes were meant to give them detach me. Not <laughs> Daniel's like, anyways, let me just cut up my food. Don't expect every reader to swallow that one. <laughs> Why is Daniel so damn jaded? Mm, skeptical. I was haunted by the salesman, and there's a fledgling vampire I did not readily take to kill it. Vampires can read minds, mon cher. Mm, mon cher. Are you gonna sit on that skill for how long? Right, come on, give us all the skills. What am I thinking right now? You'll have to tell me yourself. Oh, they can't use your powers on each other. You can't read my mind anymore. Oh, yeah, okay. Our creation means to humble us. I like that, I like that. We're at the mercy of the other's discretion. Mm -hmm. Just like to me. You're not one of them anymore, fledgling. You chase after fun. Fledgling. Yourself. I'll break you up. Interesting dynamic, okay. We have another layer here of like, like Daniel Malloy said, white vampire master black vampire fledgling and the dynamics that also entails interesting so many layers hmm. i felt it was essential to maintain ties but it was getting more difficult oh he's here to visit his family he's oh swinging his tongue in the glasses so Ooh. certain men like him do Mm, little homophobia. The mom had a little bit of homophobic, black Southern homo, black Southern homophobic mother undertones. The looking up and down, the not saying the thoughts, 
but the pursed lips, like she's talking about him getting his nails done because I guess a vampire nails, like the opaque nail color, and then his fashion style and on the sunglass. Mm. She's all like, mm, some men like him. Oh. Oh, been too long. Oh, I'm scared. The fact that you can feel his sister's heart beating, like, please don't try to eat her, drink her blood. Oh my. Oh. You making me an uncle out here? More than one heart beating. You told me that. And what? You can tell the gender? Oh, we twins. Twins? Oh, fool, doctor, no. Take them glasses off and look at don't your baby's sister. Your eyes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the eye reveal. The church window. Oh. Say why, say me. Uh. Better you, Lati. Oh, okay, okay, sister approves. Don't me this long again. I'll hunt you down and snap you sideways. Interesting. We got the supportive sister, the judgmental mother. Huh. <laughs> Dozen rooms, proper acoustics for the musician. Good for those waiting. Best to drown out the business behind the wall. Yes. Well, you really do have a mind inside that head of yours, don't you? Whoa. Backhanded compliment. So every detail has to shout exclusivity. Yeah, bright and industrious, huh? Whoa. All right. He's kind of sunning me a little bit. You really have earned your 15%. You truly are an exceptional Negro. Bitch. Now, you done pissed me off. All right, just grin and bear it, grin and bear it. I don't want to bear it, though. I want to grin and fuck you up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It was the call mm -mm. response in my entire Yeah, life. I don't like I that. let them talk to me like that. So long, I stopped hearing it. I have powers now, decades of rage to process, and it was both random and unfortunate the man picked that night to die. Oh, him. no, he's gonna kill him. Would've been the next man. Oh. <laughs> Was hungry. Stone throw from your place of business. What were you think? Disrespecting me. How did he do that? Not the blood on his all white. You are a library of confusion. I think you don't get about America, Lestat. Yes, let's have this conversation again. Mm. White, Creole, French, Ooh. queer, half queer, mostly queer. What is it? Queer. Not non discriminating. Lestat said. <laughs> Lestat said, I am open to anyone as long as it has blood run through his veins. Me and Lestat see each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's also another interesting aspect of it. Lestat is white, but he's French white, European white, whatever. He's not from the United States, so he doesn't under fully understand the racial elements that comes with being a black man in the South in the United States. So like Louis trying to explain that to him is very interesting. And I feel like that happens often a lot of times in interracial inter -racial relationships where like, the minority or like if there's depending on if they're both minorities or not but like if it's a black person with a white person having to explain the cultural differences and racial sensitivities and if you're willing to do that actually because some people aren't uh, the police will be looking for this man fledgling that's why we got this piece fledgling so restrict fledgling stop calling me that right, right. Sound a little like slave. yeah 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 i was like the fledgling is getting a little out of hand he said like four times in a row like it's giving very much boy very much like uh, subservient I know, uh, what does fledgling mean? You know what, well, let's Google fledgling. Fledgling, a personal organization that is immature and experience are underdeveloped. Okay, you know, emerge. I know what Lestat means by it, but the undertones of it, like Louis definitely said, definitely gives like slave boy, you know, you kind of want to shy away from words that kind of give that tone. So I see what Louis means by that, yeah. That's what it feel like sometimes. And the comes around mm. saying, fuck you. Not him dismissing his feelings about racial undertones. Oh, they got separate coffins. What did he say in French? Can someone translate what Lestat said in French? The two separate coffins is killing me. Well, what can I do? They couldn't have a queen size coffin. So I want to buy the fair place alone. That's <laughs> ambitious. You don't want to help, I do it myself. It's so cute. <laughs> oh. It was a grand and loving gesture on Lestat's part. My club, my room. Miss Williams. Mr. Dula. All right, hey, Miss Catfish Jenna. <laughs> My name is Benjamin. Oh, they got the babies, Benjamin. twins. Did you even Wait, isn't it supposed to be two? Oh, man. oh yeah, two. I look that old to you. No, I mean, I have oh, wait. pleasure. This isn't the twins. She had another baby. This is a third baby. Dang, so that much time has passed since um louis been home to see the sister and stuff oh louis don't do that the fact like the mom i understand i want to see her because she's been acting a little funny but the sister i feel like she's always been on his side like i would try to make time to see her but the way lestat is like i will also want to keep her safe because you know he's a jealous one <laughs> but oh louis 
Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. He's still a fledgling. That fresh baby blood is nothing like it. Bitch, you better be joking. What do you think about it? Like a baby's blood is like pure, you no know, impurities. It doesn't have all the toxins of US food and stuff. Ooh. Okay, let me get out of that mindset. I was just thinking, of, thinking like a vampire. No, I'm thinking like a fledgling. I'm sorry. Louis, stay calm. Come on, Louis. All right. Okay, okay, he's, a, he's good, he's good. But it is very dangerous. Yeah, take the baby back. You look good. Let's see if he goes back down, let's see. You take care of him! Let me just see what the hell's going on. One thing I can't stand is an incompetent man. Are those not your kids as well? You can't take care of them? Your sister is seeing, having a little nice chat with her brother she hasn't seen in a very long time, and your kids start crying, and you can't take care of them while your wife talks to her brother. Just an aside, I hate when men do stuff like that. Like, oh, honey, the kids, are they not your kids? Oh, put the fangs away, Louis. Put the fangs away. I know all the kill. My last victim okay. was in the year 2000. Some okay. Y2K disagreement? I want our readers to understand that. Okay, did you eat the baby? I sit here, a master of my instincts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why is he what like the this? Out there? Have they mastered theirs? Just the opposite. What is going on in the background with these servants? Are one of them about to feed themselves? Did you eat the baby? Oh. Did you eat youth whose family were Did you eat the baby? By a Western drone? No, I'm sure you're Did right. you no, eat that. the baby? Oh, yeah, that's dinner. Oh, no, not right in front of Daniel Malloy. Oh! You like the vibe? I haven't had the time to sightsee. Uh, good, he's so kites. disgusted. It's good. Kites. What do they get out of this? Well, actually... Thank you, Damon. Not the pat. Not the pat and the dismissal. Um, I think in the first episode, the first time Louis and Lestat got together, Louis was saying something about how like when Lestat bit him, he felt like a euphoric feeling. Cause I was thinking like, what do these servants get out of like, you know, being a blood bag for Louis besides obviously being paid? And maybe stop feeling the euphoric feeling, I think. Okay, interesting. Oh, <laughs> not him stumbling. Uh oh, he's a lightweight. Oh, damn it. All the right, baby. hurry back to your baby, please. Hurry back to your baby. Does she have a suspicion that he's a vampire? Like, what's going on? I was ready to tear into it. Yeah. I'm never gonna get control over it. Yeah. You've been skipping meals lately. Oh. Like, how do you even explain that to your sister? Like, I'm sorry, I had to run out and leave your my nephew, your son, on the floor. Like. Eh. But the way the sister closed the door and like quietly was like trying to hear to see what was happening. Like, I feel like she suspects something about Louis, but she doesn't, can't really place her finger on it. But I don't, interesting. It's a rite of passage for all of us. If you love your family, as I know you do, spare them all the pain that you were causing them. Ain't never gonna family of my own, am I? Should have thought about that. I know family, Louis. Eh, well, kind of, sort of. You have no twin. Oh. No angry. Stubborn. So he's never changed anyone else before. Interesting. Okay, here's the sweet stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're a challenge every sunset, Saint Louis. Mm. I have it no other way. Well, thank you. Lestat knows the perfect things to say to like make me feel better. Ah. <laughs> like if I was in a bad mood for whatever reason, downtrodden, whatever, Lestat would just say all the right things in the moment. But you know. <laughs> I have a private box and I had tuxedo made. Thanks. I've been neglectful of our romance. Steadfast pupil deserves a divine reward. Yeah, uh, worry about it. Stop. Those yes. First years, so she sure does. Very naturally charming. Occasionally thoughtful. Mm. Occasionally. My murderer, my mentor, my lover, and my maker. Murderer, mentor, a lover. He didn't choose me to be his doormat. I knew he enjoyed it when I fought back. Murderer, mentor, lover, and maker. Okay, three out of the four. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> we'll take we'll take three out of the four. Three out of the four is good. <laughs> I performed as his valet. Mm. Walked the pace behind him. No, I don't like that. Took his overcoat once we found our seats. Uh, I don't like that. Standing in the back of the box until the lights went down. And I do not like that. Once the overture had begun, he had a way about him. Uh, so then as I sat there trying to practice restraint. Uh, yeah, animations. he's not happy about that. The start seized it as opportunity to disarm me. There's one thing about being a vampire that I must fear above all else. 
and that is only that you take this feeling away from Gilly. We must stay together and take precaution. Another part. How many vampires? That many, I'm afraid. Maybe a hundred. A hundred? A hundred and one. Oh! I was gonna say, yeah, earlier I was talking about the racial undertones and stuff like that. So when they're down in the, um, I forgot the name of the place, but the, you know, where Louis' business is and where they live and stuff, the racial tensions, I guess, are a little bit more similar. Like they kind of all live together because it's like the party place of New Orleans. But then once they come to the upper echelon, things like opera stuff, then they have to kind of like role play the roles of like servant and master, much to Louis' uh, dismay. So interesting, that dynamic of it. Um, Unfortunate, but you do what you gotta do to see some good theater. <laughs> there was one issue, however, that threatened to pop the bubble of our Italian holiday. And that was the tenor playing Ernesto. Uh-oh, he's a little flat. To be kind, Ooh. he did not live in the soprano's vocal stratosphere. Uh-oh, he's not as good as the lady. Oh. Ooh. And Lestat was not him flinching at the tenor is bad singing. Oh, calm down. Is he marking all the parts where the tenor is flat? Oh my God. Curtain fell like a guillotine and mm. Lestat leapt to his feet in mock appreciation, which could mean only one thing. He's ready to kill somebody. Oh, that tenor's not gonna live long. This poor soul was someone's son. Yeah, that's the part that oh, gets brother. me. And he was to be butchered for what? Right. An offending note. Oh. Not I'm trying to teach him how to sing the notes properly. I'm screaming. Let's stop. Why are you like this? And you can oh. see all the doubts the young man had about his art, about himself, exposed on his nodding, agreeable face. So no more of your sound can pollute this world. Why do you do this, Lestat? Because uh, he's mean. Well, I like to do it. I enjoy it. Well, I don't. It's a mean gay. Don't have to kill <laughs> but I don't say that you have to enjoy it. Kill him swiftly if you have to, but do it. Embrace what you are. You are a killer, Louis. What are you yelling at? How many people were scared? Okay. Me too. In bringing death, the stock was an artist. And I'll say it for a third time and no more. He had a way about him. Yes, we know. And I was still very much under his power. Uh-huh. We would drain the tenor for hours that night. A start completely enthralled. Mm. Myself pretending to be. Him fake pretend to enjoy something because his lover enjoys it. Interesting. Right. I was a shame ridden second. Uh, a fumbling, despondent killer, a botched vampire. Mm. I try to have a human dish once a week to maintain the thread. There was an offhanded remark in your memoir about this dessert. I hope you don't mind. Ooh. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, I love Louis' dining room and just his, and just his nature. Oh, I love it so much. Well, that was Interview with the Vampire season one, episode two, after the phantoms of your former self. So we got the next part in Louis' transformation. Now that he's transformed into a vampire, him adjusting to being a vampire, Lestat's guidance of him being a vampire ushering in, or like thereof, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> and just seeing how that uh, all comes together and even just seeing Louis kind of come to terms with it and seeing if he could balance like seeing his family but obviously seeing that's not going to be a possibility with this new affliction um and so now we have this kind of thing where Lestat's kind of uh telling Louis to embrace being a killer and enjoying the blood and being a vampire and all that stuff and Louis trying to kind of push back against it but he's still kind of like trying to please his lover slash master <laughs> um so interesting, and in the first episode, my first reaction to the first episode, I said something about how um, Louis seemed all poised and refined, and maybe Lestat taught him that, you know, being French and all that stuff. But in present day, like, Louis from the 1900s, and now he's lived probably like 100 or so years himself. So 
in that time, I'm sure he's also been able to collect himself and learn all different cultures and be refined and all stuff. So he may, may have taught himself all this refinement in terms of the finer things, because the way he just has the seven course dinner for Daniel Malloy and the way his architecture set up in his UAE apartment and just the way he carries himself now is definitely seems like a different Louis from than we saw in the 1900s, but a lot can happen in a hundred years. So that's very interesting, but this is a very interesting episode, a very good episode. And I'm excited to continue watching this show. So of course, let's leave, let's talk about the show down below in the comments, leave a like on the video, make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed, you can see the next video when it comes. And of course, you can extend a comment to our Patreon. And until next time for the third episode of Interviews with a Vampire, be well and bye.